Hi, my name is Callie Foster. I'm with the Safe Office at Rice University. I'm a resource navigator, and we do uh, Title IX support um, here at the office. Today, we're going to be talking about supporting pregnant and parenting students. Title IX promised um, to overturn years of bias in banning sex discrimination in federally funded schools. It started within the athletics field and then recently was reinforced for for schools to take on sexual harassment. However, protection against pregnancy discrimination has largely been ignored. For the 40th year the Title IX, of Title IX, the Obama administration announced measures to boost women in STEM. And one part of this was through Title IX compliance. Protecting pregnant and parenting students should be the next avenue Title IX needs to focus in. Throughout the presentation, I will capture the dynamics of who has been affected, why they are being pushed out of the school pipeline, and the laws that are there to support them, along with how we can do our part as students, staff, and administrators to support these students. Going through pregnancy and parenting is hard for anyone, and it should never be the end of someone's education career and consequently their earning potential. A study from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation found 22% of students dropped out because they became parents. This group also reported that they were more likely to have worked harder if the school would have demanded more and would have provided the necessary supports. Many of these students reported that they were on track for graduation and had a strong belief that they would have graduated. According to the CDC, 2019 saw the lowest teen birth rate at 16.7 for every thousand females. While lower, the disparity in this teen birth rate are still two times higher in Hispanic and non-Hispanic black teens than their white counterparts. Only about 50% of teen mothers receive a high school diploma by the age of 22 compared to 90% of women who do not give birth during this period of time. Completion of a high school diploma is the most fundamental step in our economy. Dropping high school can lead to a number of issues, including reducing earning potential, lack of development and employment skills, and a higher likelihood of living in poverty. This same Gates found, study found that the parents who dropped out are more likely to have children who drop out of high school, leading us to see setbacks that can com compound. It also highlights the importance, the importance of students, supporting these students as a multi-generational benefit. National Women's Law Center conducted a study to better understand what barriers were there that prevented girls from succeeding. Through this survey and focus groups of 14 to 18 year olds, the Let Her Learn st study found that girls related these barriers to completing their education. Within the school, they expressed fr frustration in an environment of discouragement through low expectations, unwelcoming policies to outright hostility, dis discrimination, and direct or indirect pressure to leave. Many girls described a shift in how their teachers and their peers perceived them once they became pregnant. And this often led to feelings of shame and feeling unwelcomed at school. The lack of support left one in four girls saying that they had little to no counseling or mentorship to talk about their future. They believed that they would have had a solid support system in counselors, teachers, or a mentor. They could at least dream about the future and achieve more. In addition, there was an increased target of harassment and unwanted sexual attention, leaving them feeling uneasy at school. And in some cases, there was safety concerns. Many schools did not have a clear absence policy, the accommodations that for these mothers. Oftentimes, the individual schools left it up to the teachers, and those teachers were not informed about Title IX compliance. The other one was logical accommodations. Girls reported punishment and trying to fulfill ar arbitrary requirements. One girl specifically was threatened with detention when she was no longer able to tuck in her shirt. 
This study was also prior to COVID. So remote learning wasn't as established, but the girls did report that most of these in-home services were they were told were not for normal pregnancies. Although alternative programs do offer flexible and on-site um, childcare, they don't provide rigorous academic classes, leaving them rem remedial and less prepared for college. At home, there is a lack of childcare or affordable childcare. Financial assistance was a barrier due to the way that the state programs uh, take in family income, even if their parents refuse to provide to help with that income. Need for transportation was ranked among the top three barriers for these young women. Student needs, needs to find transportation for both her and her child. And oftentimes they were not able to take them on the bus, even if there was childcare at the school. Many of these girls had to work to support themselves, learning to balance a lot of stress but having, still having very little control over their lives. Many of these girls also reported having to caretake for others in their family. Of course, economic and housing concerns were great concerns. And then due to the social programs, complications around their rules, they still had a hard time accessing those social programs to help with economics and housing stability. Oftentimes these girls did report a higher rate of instability within the family as well. And all of this usually led up to higher levels of negative feelings. Girls reported high levels of depression, PTSD, stress, and anxiety. In the higher education, these are the higher education and trade uh, schools are prime childbearing years and required equal the, equally the same support to reach their degree. In a briefing paper from the Institute of Women's Policy Research found that single mothers in college were more than doubled in 12 years from 1999 to 2012, and women in co of color were especially likely to be single parents. 30% of these single parents attended non-for-profit uh, institutions, which was triple the rate of women who, who had with, were without children. Investing in programs and support that target the needs of single mothers in higher education has the potential to improve their rates of college attainment and increase their earning, which also leads to a multi-generational benefit, benefit. According to the Pregnant Scholar, the average age of a postdoc reaching their first permanent position is 40 years old. They report childbirth and parenting have been there identified as their main reason that young women scientists drop out of the academic pipeline before obtaining their first job. Their findings indicate that women in science who are married and with children are 35% less likely to enter a tenure track than men with children and 27% less likely to achieve tenure. The pregnant and um, the pregnant scholar, in partnership with National Postdoc Association, surveyed and interviewed postdocs, plus analyzed institutional HR benefits policies in 2014. This study found that both moms and dads reporting that the institution provided no paternity or maternity leave for postdoc employees. Postdoc that were institutional employees did fare better than um, postdoc trainees or postdocs that were individually funded. But ex externally funded postdocs reported to fare the worst at 85% of the time fathers reporting that there was no access to paid leave. They also reported having no paid sick or vacation time. All of these benefits would vary greatly depending on the funding source. Postdoc mothers reported that they, they're requesting accommodation very low at 40%, but when they did request those accommodations, their acceptance rate was pretty high. Paid or unpaid, many mothers reported that they had no job protection for time off of the, at, for the birth of their child. Not able to afford unpaid leave, many returned to work even before recovering from 
childbirth. Many fathers had to fight for leave as well. They had to fight for outdated beliefs about family, caretaking roles, and family bonding time. And one in 10 reported their PI's response to their new parenting status negatively impact their placement. Of course, fathers of color experience this impact at one in five. For all parents, they found that non-white researchers were discouraged from leaving, taking leave nearly twice as much as their white counterparts. One in 10 mothers and four in five fathers responded they were not sure what the HR policy included them or not. HR offices themselves often reported misinterpreting the policy and struggling to navigate various grant related fundings. Different funding source often resulted in different, uh, provi pro providing different benefits depending on the funding source. Even when leave is secure, the parents were often pressured to return with anything from guilting to actually open threats of cutting off funding, trying to compel them to come back. Several reported, reported that they did come back and when they did, they could not make minor changes to their schedule to accommodate their new family, causing them to have to leave the position. And the postdoc commonly reported that being on the wait list for childcare that was multiple years long, a wait list that was multiple years long, and the cost for childcare was 50 to 100% of their salary for on campus. The problem is discrimination and bias are still happening, but there is no way to capture the problem, leading to unreliable data on who is actually, who is actually facing discrimination. One of the largest problems is the dissemination of this information. Administration has the responsibility to create a culture of care within these institutions, and they must recognize the social consequence leading to generational impacts for certain communities more. There is a lack of knowledge among school professionals around compliance for Title IX, and some of the schools don't even have a Title IX coordinator. For example, Institutions sometimes leave policies up to teachers, and sometimes those policies do not comply. And without the students knowing their rights, they, those students often defer to policies which are on the syllabus. The federal laws protecting parent, pregnancy and parenting are Title IX, American Disability Act, and Pregnancy and Discrimination Act, and possibly FMLA. Title IX bars discrimination and implementation regulates based and implements regulation based on sex. It re requires specific, specifically to support pregnant and parenting students as well as employees. In addition, Title IX requires schools to treat pregnancy and all related conditions like a temporary disability. The ADA prohibits disability discrimination and requires the institution to make reasonable, reasonable accommodations for those who qualify. Qualifying through physical and mental impairments that limit or have a history of limiting life activities or a person perceived by others to have an impairment. While pregnancy itself is not a disability, many pregnant-related pregnant impairments and complications may qualify. Then for anyone within the institution of learning, working within the institution of learning, the Pregnancy Discrimina Discrimination Act prohibits employment discrimination based on current, past, potential, intended pregnancies and or medical conditions related to pregnancy and childbirth. In addition, the, medical, the Family Medical Leave Act applies for all working students as well. Lastly, there are local and state civil rights laws that apply supporting anyone who is pregnant because it, it prohibits discrimination based on sex, race, color, religion, or national or, or origin. Title IX's definition of who is covered is someone who is pregnant or was pregnant, which includes pregnant protections related to pregnancy, childbirth, termination of pregnancy, 
false pregnancy and or recovering of, pregnant, of false pregnancy, specifically working with individuals who have had the me a medical condition. However, best practice policies regarding parenting should include all parenting, regardless of sex, be provided for the same level of leave or accommodation to support that role. Mother-only caretaking policies um, are prohib prohibited because they treat students differently based on sex. Policies should also not differentiate between birth mothers, birth fathers, adopted, or other parents. All students are responsible to comply with Title IX, and that is through the Title IX coordinator. The coordinator is responsible for ensuring that, that all students have access to equal opportunity in their education. They have the basic, most reasonable accommodations. They make sure that all special programs and schools are voluntary and have the opportunity to build career skills or for post-secondary education. That the absences and makeup of opportunities are provided for those students and that they are to make sure that the classrooms and schools are free from harassment by teachers, staff, and peers for these young adults. Under Title IX, a pregnant and parenting uh, student is provided full access to school and extracurricular activities. Within the classroom, these environment, this environment should be harassment free in, from statements or assumptions about family status or the pregnancy itself. Extracurricular par participation should only be, be decided between their doctor and the student if it's appropriate for them to participate or continue to participate through their pregnancy. It is, it is, if there is alternative programs, those must be voluntary for the students to engage in. Medical leave is related, as related to the pregnancy, the birth or other related conditions is excusable with the ability to make up the exams, assignments and miss participation points, no matter what the syllabus says or the classroom policy is. And when these students are on leave, it is important that the leave is just that, leave. They get the same amount of time as other students to make up the assignments that they have missed. When the student returns, the student is reinstated in the same program at the same point with the same standing as they left. The school has to provide the same temporary disability um, accommodations as a temporary disability student. For example, if there's distant and remote learning available to a disabled student, then it is also available to the pregnant and parenting student as well. Other physical accommodations are access to the typist or a note taker due to a pregnancy related carpal tunnel, access to an elevator or looking at the seat assignment for um, closer to the bathroom, a closer parking spot, a different desk type, or the ability to sit instead of stand during lab. Other helpful accommodations are to think about extended breaks and exam times to accommodate the nursing and pumping or um, bathroom or additional eating due to the pregnancy. And then also revisiting schedules and meetings and groups if needed. We, you always have to know that no doctor's note is needed unless it's required for any other student that is being treated by a doctor. If a note is required, at no point does your doctor need to specifically state medical information. Schools have an obligation to ensure policies, staff, and teachers conform to the Title IX law. Given the social consequence, the education, the education institution as a whole needs to dig deeper. Training is an opportunity for administration to change perspective and attitudes within the institution around this life-changing event as one of an opportunity. Push for teachers to hold their classrooms as a harassment-free space. See accommodations as opportunities for students to be able to direct their own support, as well as promoting these supports through information and um, informing students of their rights. One way to do this is through the syllabi. This sets a tone for a change of attitude. 
review, they need to review policies to reflect current law and think about supporting young families. Think about how it's best to support parents um, when children are ill. When the state allows it, um, administrators need to think about letting um, young parents bring their children on the bus. At the college level, universities and colleges need to think about competitive edge family friendly policies and that sometimes means challenging funding sources to think about these young families. Invest in intentional support systems through mental health or social work programs. This provides mentorship and individualized learning plans along with childcare and special funding and supports which, which and support programs which might combine paid work with credit or attendance. And then lastly, accommodating breastfeeding. This is often through breaks and it takes a long time and it needs to be a private space that is not a restroom. A student becoming a parent can be a powerful motivator to become the best version of themselves. When students honor this motivation and harness it throughout the through strategic parenting and pregnancy assistance, then we will not only improve our educational outcomes, but improve the quality of life through earnings and access to employee sponsored retirement and health insurance plans that will benefit the community as a whole. Women with a four year degree on average make $612,000 more than someone, a woman with just some college experience. And they make $822,000 more on average than a woman with only a high school diploma. Title IX allows us to support the end game of every student. The ability to graduate their respective programs is a critical part of strengthening the family well being and economic security. Below is my uh, contact if you would like to contact me. And thank you for listening to my presentation.